Brace my dog. <laughs> Hey, we go Andrea, and this is a long and awaited, patiently, not so patiently, <laughs> video giving you a finalized kind of sort of cow calf barn tour, answering some questions, all of that jazz. So, without further ado, let's, let's talk about this. This is a 304 by 62 foot AccuSil building. Uh, it's got the hoop barn style, but there are some differences between this and a traditional original style of hoop barn per se of the other one that we have so we'll talk about that um we have cow calf pairs in here but right now we've weaned um the majority of the calves so the first two pens up here are freshly weaned calves about a month weaned now almost and then we do have some cows in the remaining part of the barn and then some of the other cows are out in all their yards until we preg check and get them out to corn stalks and bean stubble and all of that good stuff so there are six pens in this barn. They are all the way down. They work well for calving groups. So like this year for an example, um, we had heifers calving up front where our calving pen was, where we sleep at night with heifers calving. Like everything is just like close up there. That way if you need it, if you have to get the calf puller, like it's all right there, easy peasy. Then we had um, our oldest calves and oldest calves are kind of moved them and cycled them into these two pens down here, five and six. And then three and four um, kind of were the last group to calve. And then one of the pens was the spicy cows. So that way you had a safe pen on each side in case a lady like this decided she wanted to play games with you. Tagging wise, it is super easy to sneak calves out under a gate into a different pen, especially like I said, we kept a safe pen on each side of the not safe pen. Um, so this is one of the cows that is not safe. Um, I don't think she's safe right now either. She's going to the sale barn actually. Um, but because you had a safe pen, you could just pull calves through. They didn't bother you. Um, you can, they sneak you under gates really well. Calf hook works well. You can get them in the bunk. You can go behind gates. There's so many options in here for tagging. It makes it super <laughs> incredibly easy, which I absolutely love. So big win for that. Um, Obviously, it comes with growing pains, learning and stuff, but overall, like, the barn has been great. It's been awesome, especially with how brutal our winter was this year, because let me tell you, if you're in the Midwest, you know that it was not fun. It was, it was bad. We do pile some manure out here. We have a concrete landing to push it out when you scrape the alleyway. We scrape the alleyway probably every three to four days, depending on the time of year on the group of cattle. Um, and then we haul it out as we have loads or have manure spreader hooked up. And then this door um, does shut, it's just on a curtain, roll it down. And then the back curtain over here, you can shut all of that and the other door over there. So the only thing that's open essentially is the south side where you feed and then the little vents up top. But actually you'd be surprised, there's not a lot of snow that comes in at all. You get like a light dusting <laughs> on top of the gates and cows when there's a foot of snow outside. So that part is nice. I've had a lot of questions about this rail system. Um, so it's adjustable, obviously. We had a guy out of Kansas come do all of our gating on the entire barn. And it's adjustable. So we did have it like this first. Ended up having to pop it down lower when we had calves getting shoved into bunks for a while. And then we had to put a fence out here because this was corn. And we all know cows are worth quite a bit right now. So we didn't want them getting out into the cornfield. Um, the cows do throw feed out, so we gotta scoop that up every so often. Uh, six and five are together right now. So those are some of, most of Western South Dakota cows we bought. Some other ones are in there. And then three and four are together with cows and one and two have calves in it right now. So that's kind of the front end. Um, the necro system, obviously it's up now. We do have dividers. You can put in here when there's calves that way hi they're not um sneaking into other pens i've had a little bit of some feet issues just every once in a while with cows and that in here um especially when they come into heat if they get ridden hard they're sore for a couple days to a week i've had a couple that have actually had like abscesses foot rot come through but not not anything crazy and they always have a couple regardless anyway so Bulls running in here is a thing that I don't absolutely love, especially when it's 50 cows to one bull and they're coming into heat really hard and heavy. So this next year we're going to AI and hopefully just use it for cleanup so he doesn't have as many to breed, hopefully, because we ran three bulls in here sharing two pens. Apparently somebody's still hanging out with a baby. So, uh, cows, calves. 
What you doing? You're kind of a spicy lady. Huh, these are the calves. They're on feed really well. This barn works so well to start calves. Um, so you have ground corn, just a little bit. Corn silage, ground hay, ground corn stalks. Soy syrup and modified distillers in the calf ration. This is step one. But, I mean, most of these calves were in the barn anyway, so they were already eating TMR. And then the extra um, handful that came from pasture were like, oh, I'll follow my friends. So the calves went on feed phenomenally well. I'll do another video on weaning weights and stuff. We still have another group to wean. So I'll have to do some calculations and get adjusted weaning weights to make them even and do an apples to apples comparison, not an apples to bananas. So stay tuned for that. I know that was a question. Everyone's like, what are your weaning weight comparisons? Well... Our oldest calves are on pasture, so it's hard to know, but I'll adjust. Um, there's some young ones in here, but I'll do the math equations, get it figured out. One thing we would change is make this driving, um, what are you going to call it, feed alleyway <laughs> concrete. We would make it a little bit wider. As you can see, there's a track here that the ale processor sits on because we have dual tractor with it. So we would just add on and we probably will down the road just because it does suck you in when it gets nice and soggy. So I mentioned that this is not the same as like most traditional older style hoop barns, like the two hoop barns that we all had back in the day if you're in the area, um, where the entire length of the barn is one piece of fabric. Yeah, and if it goes, the entire barn goes. This, every individual rafter section is its own section of the cover, the fabric cover. So if one goes, hopefully it's just that section. It's not the entire barn. It's very heavy duty. That's why we went this style and it was a little more affordable than like a monoslope style barn. But you also get that good ventilation in here, that natural daylight, you know, airflow, all that good stuff that comes in. That was the main reasons for it. And like I said, in the winter, the only side that's open is the south side where you feed. Most of the blizzards come from the north and the northwest anyways. But that's the differences in this building. I said 304 by 62, so... 304 long, 62 wide. Got our working area that takes a little bit of space out of it, and this first pen actually has some extra bunk space. You can fit a couple extra cows. It's a good place to have sick cows, injured cows, kind of a sick pen type of thing. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, love our shoot. 10 out of 10 recommend. That's a whole, whole world that I love. Um, we're going to end up redoing some revamping in here just to make things flow. These adjustable alleyways were made by the gate guy too. Um, unfortunately, we have some very chunky cows in late trimester when they come in for their scour boss shot. Um, yeah, they don't fit. <laughs> so it's just too V-shaped at the bottom and it goes like that, that they're getting stuck. So we need to make some tweaks and stuff in there. It does work for calves. Um, so you'll see some changes coming for that down the road. And then the bud box, we don't use it. As it was designed, it was designed to bring the calves around the front into here and then feed in. Well, one, I stand up there with all of my stuff. It's a pain in the butt to get out of the way. So we've actually just been feeding them in from the back and it's been working really well, especially for these guys. They did phenomenally well. Not using it as it is designed, but it does work really well for us to do it that way. So just a little note on that. Um, and now the cows know how it flows too, so that should go really well, hopefully, when we process um, and preg check them this, in a couple weeks, actually. I'll keep you updated on that, but calves are doing really well. We bed every couple of days. We scrape the alleyway every couple of days, keep them dry. So there is the challenge. When we do breeding season, we put two pens together. So like they are right now, it's essentially made into three pens. Instead of being one, two, three, four, five, six, it's one and two, three and four, five and six. Well, um, cows do what cows do when it's hot out, or just in general, and they congregate together in one pen. So one pen was beyond wet, one pen was dry, and guess which pen they're standing in? The wet one. So that was kind of a issue. Um, the cows flatten bed back out a lot better because there's more of them, I think, the ratio is right versus the cows, and then we've cleaned out. Depending on the pen, depending how full it is, this front pen we have a lot of heifers in and then it just gets fuller and fuller because we had more in there rotating out. Clean that a little bit more often, but I would say it's been like a three times a year clean. Also did creep feed pens. So we lost some holes in the concrete here and this is a new thing for AccuSteel. Um, and made these nice tees to put in here eventually once we opened it up that only the calves could get out. That way they could have more space, have more room. We set up these panels. 
And they had creep feeders in here while they were still on mama's. Obviously now they're just sitting here empty. Um, they're honestly using my scratching posts. But we did have this divided into three different pens to correspond with the one and two, three and four, five and six. You can see the gate sitting here. Um, but it gave the calves some space away from mom and they could play and run and obviously eat creep feet. Um, they recommend 100 square feet per pair in the barn. Ours are like 130. So they do have more space and I really liked giving them this creep feed space because the calves are out here. It helped things stay dry inside. It just, they figured out how to be independent in a sense before they were even weaned. So I liked that a lot. Nothing fancy, just um, we made it that way. If a cow would happen to get herself stuck in here like cows do, we can pop it out pretty quick. Um, it's sitting on a bolt, pop up, go from there. This pen has not been cleaned out for months. So you can see the backpack is getting a little bit higher, but not not bad at all. Um, same with that next pen over there. And I just get some fresh bedding every so often and work it in. It's staying a lot more dry now that it's just cows and just calves in different pens. Moisture wise, rain doesn't come in too bad unless you have absolutely no wind. Then it just, it'll come straight down and you'll have wet spots in the middle. Uh, not bad. Snow really stays out. It kind of like if it blows in, it just blows right out. Um, there's a lot of blizzards we have this year, a lot of snow we have this year in southwest Minnesota. And the most we ever had in the barn was like this much snow. So way better than us camping <laughs> out in open lots like we used to. If you get a good windy day and it's not super humid, it dries the barn up in the bed pack really nice. If it's damp and humid and just gross weather and not a lot of wind it gets much more wet on the bed pack so bedding is very variable like there's weeks we didn't bed for an entire week there's weeks where we bed every single day because we just couldn't keep it dry without doing that so that was kind of an adventure as far as things you have to have to make this barn work that's a pretty big point i want to make you are need, going to need to have a bale processor that can throw bedding in because you are not going to want to haul ba bales in all the time. It's gonna, you're not gonna like it, it's not gonna be fun. It's way easier to drive by, um, shoot the bedding in, two bales, three bales, whatever you do, we usually do two bales for the barn. Um, so it's not a lot, you just split it. That's a must have, and then you're gonna have to have some sort of like grapple bucket to clean it out. Those are two things you absolutely are gonna wanna have um, to make the barn work. And obviously I think you should have calving pens in here if you're gonna calve cows in here, especially then you don't have to shut all the gates, move one cow down from the opposite end to the calving pen over here. Ours are out now, but we had two of them that way there's one on each side. So you would max only have to move like two pens, not six. It works well to start calves on feed in here too. Like these guys have not skipped a beat. And if you want tame calves, having them in a barn like this where you're here all the time, it's the way to go. They are absolutely ridiculous. Some of you guys were on pasture too, but 23s are out of first calf heifers, so they did really well this year. So, and we a couple younger babies. All that good stuff. What's up? Racing the dog. <laughs> you just walk through the camp creek gate. Ugh. Um, the other thing, weaning and sorting cows off of cows was beyond easy <laughs> in this barn because you had so many different ways to sort. So you could sort out the creep pens, shut the gates. You could sort cows into one pen in the alleyway. There was just so many options. Like, I think we had everybody sort it off. There's 160-ish head in this barn right now. Um, we had them sort it off in like an hour and 15. Like, it was quick and easy versus trying to run gates and push animals everywhere. And worked well for us. All the gates are on hinges like this. You can grease them. That way they stay working. A couple of them are in weird spots, um, but they can twist all the way around like that gate. You can sit like that or it can sit here. The gates by the water fountains open. Do have to clean the waters every so often because of all the corn stalks and stuff, but um, three waters in here. They're just the Omni. I don't even know what size they are. They work well. No issue. Each two pen shares one, but uh, this gate opens. You can sort calves through here. These gates, you also, hi, can use this to squeeze a calf to treat. If you don't want to get them all the way in the chute, it actually works really, 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 really well. Um, or tag calves behind this because cows can't get to you. From a safety standpoint of having ways to get away from an angry mama cow, 
um, the ease of hand, cattle, handling cattle. It's just been a really great barn. We did attach an old garage. If you remember the video of us moving it, if you haven't seen it, it's super fun. Um, moved it across the yard. That is our barn office. So we have everything in there versus being across the yard. Meds, it's heated. It has supposed to have air conditioning. We didn't get hooked up. Obviously, it still needs to be tint, but we got it going for what we needed. Hi. Like I said, tame calves. You're going to be naughty in the feedlot. I know it. I know it. And it's the office. So, got everything we need. Uh, important toilet if you have to pee. Obviously, super important sink. You give calves a bath in here. There's a drain. Storage, fridge for meds, all the meds. Couch, chairs, TV, all the things if you're... Out here all night, you can watch Netflix and hang out. But whiteboard with notes, and then we will put a door on this before winter. But there she is in all of her glory. There's the two cabin pens we had in there. The crew pens are on the north side. Have had the curtain open all summer since it got nice out, give them some more airflow, but we've been happy. Just for funsies, um, this pen is actually where we used to calf. Back in that barn and this yard and over here. And it was super fun, let me tell you. But now we just have cows in here. And then the bulls. That's the barn in a nutshell. So let me know if you have any questions, things you want to see up closer, all that good stuff. Happy to do that. Drop them in, in the comments or I can make another video. But until next time, we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Hope you hit that subscribe button and you'll see this more in action much more <laughs> over the next however many videos because year round we use it.